Well, we've already had a testimony and a short sermon already, so I'll pass on giving you more. Amen? But we appreciate, thank you so much for your support for our national pastors. you got a nice big map out there. I hope you stop by and read some of the, the names that are there and see where these people are from all over the world. And uh, this church has a worldwide impact. Isn't that neat? You know, a church of any size can have a worldwide spiritual impact of the gospel of Christ by supporting nationals who are in those countries already and who can move around freely and can't be kicked out of their own country. Amen? Isn't that good? They can never be asked to leave. And uh, Americans are asked to leave all the time. In fact, down in Haiti, it's they say... I've heard from more than one source, our brother here, he says, it's not safe to be in Haiti right now for Americans. So, well, what are we supposed to do? All the Americans have to come home. Well, I guess God's done working in Haiti, isn't he? No. He's left many people behind. Good, good, solid men that are serving the Lord, love the Lord with all their heart. And same thing in Africa and all over the world. And um, it's great to be a part of that, isn't it? And I'd like to sing a song called Going and Sowing. Pastor Theron Tuning pastors the uh, Fowler Avenue Baptist Church in Tampa, Florida. And they host the national pastors every year, every fall from the middle of September to the 1st of December, two and a half months. And they do so much for us. They provide housing. They have a nice big kitchen. The people, mostly the older, older congregation, they're always bringing food in for these guys. And somebody brought a big turkey in the other day. It was already cooked and hardly, hardly touched at all. And uh, we, we dove into that, got a couple pieces off that. That was pretty neat. Um, but these, but they're, they're just a blessing. And the Brother Theron Chudy's been there since I think he was 27 years old. He is now 83 or 84 years old. Uh, he's been there a long time, about 60 years. And uh, just they love help ministries. He was, he was one of the first ones that got started with them at the beginning 28 years ago. Well, one year, a number of years ago, probably eight or nine years ago, he came to me and he says, you know, back in 1984, that was over 30 years ago almost, he says, I, uh, he says, I wrote a poem on missions. And um, could you put it to music? And I said, well, let me give it a shot. We'll see what we can do. So I did. And uh, it's called Going and Sowing. And, you know, there must be some sowing if there will be growing. <laughs> the seed must be put in the ground. That's what missions is all about, isn't it? And there's uh, some really good instruction in this song. Let me, let me sing this for you. For the Lord, you can listen if you want. be some sowing if there will be growing the seed must be put in the ground so off to the highways and into the byways we go where the lost can be found christ died for our sin then rose again he conquered death hell and the grave he paid the price his own sacrifice he's the only one who can save going sowing what will christ's followers do going sowing could it be god is speaking to you the gospel we're telling the darkness dispelling let us go with this message today to the young and the old this truth must be told they must hear what we have to say the harvest is great and how his heart breaks to see that the laborers are few now we must stand, go at his command. It takes more than just filling a pew. Going, sowing, what will Christ's followers do? Going, 
sowing. Could it be God is speaking to you? Could it be God is speaking to you? Going, sowing. I think God is speaking to you. National pastors with us, brother Peter Angolo is from Kenya, Africa, and uh, he's out in the bush. Here we call it the country; there they call it the bush. Amen. And he's way out there, and in, in a lot of villages, and reaching these people for Christ, and starting a Bible institute. He's got eight students, I think, right now, and uh, started five churches already. But uh, pray for him and the needs they have. Um, you may mention this, but they, you know, one, one thing they have is they don't have wells over there like we have here. One thing they say, all these guys say all the time is, man, it's really nice. Everywhere you look, there's, there's sinks and water and, you know, anytime you want water, you can get it anytime. If they get water, they have to walk three or four miles to the river to get the water for the day and then bring it back home. Every day they have to do that. Sometimes twice a day. If you have relatives visiting you, you know, but uh, so they're talking about drilling wells over there next to their church, and if they do that, the people will come to the church to get the water, and they can give, they can give them the water of life, amen, and that's, that is so, so neat. Brother, come if you would, and um, appreciate Brother Peter, amen. I'm very happy. Good evening. So I want to sing a song. I'm sorry I'm not going to sing it in English because all the songs which I hear them here in English, you sing it, you sing them very nice. I know if I sing in, in English, you will not get it. <laughs> I want to sing the song, What Can Wash Away Our Sins. I'm only going to sing one stanza and chorus. See us with a misangu. Eladamu yake Yesu Apende se wimungu Eladamu yake Yesu Akuna kabisa Dawa ya makosa Ya Kutu takasa Ila damu yake Yesu Here you call Yesu Jesus There we call him Yesu So Anyway I would like to give In a special way Thanks to the preacher and the church at large who have given us this opportunity to come and stand here and share the work we are doing in our various places. God bless you. I also want to remember the kind of hospitality we have been getting here since I came here yesterday. The hospitality is very high very good food. You know when food is sweet, we keep we, we just say, ah, food was so, so sweet. And we reach there. We don't remember those who made food to become sweet. Yeah? There are some people who made it to become sweet. May God bless them. God bless you. So now, it was like uh, this time when I received my second bath, 
there was a man from this land who came to Nairobi, Kenya and drove over 10 hours to the bush where I live. He came with Jesus feeling. That night, over 10,000 people attended that Jesus feeling to watch. I was one of them. I just walked the same way other people walked to go there. When this film was over, the gospel was preached. There, I came to realize that I was a sinner. I needed to accept Jesus Christ as my personal savior. When it reached the time for invitation, I carried my hand. At first I was afraid, but I just got myself, I carried my hand, and I was called in front. That night I was led to the Lord, and when I went back home, I went a different person. When I was saved, and I was very happy, and my name was now written in the book of life. Then I joined a Bible school in Kisumu, Kenya, which I took three years studying there. After my graduation, when I went back home, God put a burden in me concerning those souls. My wife and I, we started knocking the doors of our people with the gospel. I saw one person receiving Lord Jesus Christ, one, two, three, four. Then when they had reached four, I started, we started asking ourselves, what is next? Because now we see people are saved, getting saved. So we started our first church. This brought us to start the first church. Now I've planted five churches, which is not enough. I sat down and set a goal. As long as I'm still alive, I need to plant 120 plus churches. It looks big and it creates doubt in other people's heart. Yes, I know that. When it looks big, it is not bigger than the God we are serving. God whom we are serving is bigger than the goal which I set to reach as long as I am alive. So when I've started, when I've set the goal, I now start again. How now can I meet the goal which I've already set? I started training men of God. I'm training now, me, I'm a trainer. I have eight students by now whom I'm training. In my heart, I know I am the vision bearer. They help me reach my vision because they don't know that I have already set my goal to, to plant 120 plus churches. So by this, I borrowed this idea from the book of 2 Timothy 2.2, 2, where when Apostle Paul was talking to Timothy, and the things that thou hast heard of me, among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Yes. If these eight students plus me they continue teaching people. And those people whom they are teaching will continue teaching people. And those, their grandchildren in teaching continue teaching people. Plus your prayers, we will reach 120 plus churches. That is how it is. So I... The area of uh, a prayer, the five churches which are planted, two of them are taking their services under trees. 
This is where we need to pray for them. We have prayed for that for over three years. I've never lost hope because we believe in God. One time God will meet the need. The kind of, we pray that we they should get a roof. Because when it reaches time for rain, people fail to come to church because they fear rainfall. They don't come, at, uh, they, don't, they totally don't come to church until the season of rain comes. It, it stops. We need a prayer as that li- for that line. What we are praying for, we don't want uh, a very expensive building like this one of yours. And this one is too expensive for us in the Kenya and in the bush. We just need a very light which can help us worship the Lord without any disturbance. So pray for us for that line. Where I train people in the school, I also need a prayer. Brother Thomas has touched a little part of it. We have a lot of challenges there, but we took the most important one. In Kenya, we are lacking, we are going for what what a a long distance. It is not like America here, I find everywhere, water is everywhere. Until people are now not drinking water, they are just tasting. You will find a, a person tasting just a very little portion, then that one is thrown away. In, in Kenya, and especially where I live, we go, we look for water over four miles, and you go walking and coming back. So we were praying, if God can open a way, we get a well near the church where we train people. This well will help the school, we help the church, we help church members, and even the community, who are going very far for water, they will say, oh no, now God has blessed us with the well near us here. Even if they are not church members, they will come and now we will use that water as a tool to share with them the word of God. That even to share with them the the gospel tracts, we even reduce our way of walking looking for souls, eh? we get them here and we tell them, here is the church which cares for you. Yeah? So, pray for us as per that line is concerned. I also need a prayer in my family. Why do I put it the last? It should be the first. But because I want, when you want God to do your work, do God's work. I put my request to become number last, the last number. When it reached 21st of April 2016, when we were out for soul winning, when we came back home, we found somebody burnt our home with everything. The investigation was done with the police, the person was not found. But I know even right now, God knows the person who burnt our homes. When it reached 2017, on 10th of June, as this one was, it brought a lot of stress in our hearts. This was going on with uh, my wife, and I was, uh, all the time, I was consoling her. When it reached 10th of June, 2017, depression came and my wife passed away. Now, as I speak to you, the wife whom we were opening the work of God with is with the Lord. I'm happy because it is now only my turn remaining to go to her. I will see her, and I know 
because she was saved and I'm saved we will meet she uh, she will not come back but I will go to her I also thank God because God is a God of order a faithful God a loving God when it reached eighth January this year God gave me a new wife who is now taking care of my children I forgot to tell you that I'm married I have six children and three of them are now grown up I have five grandchildren one grandson and four granddaughters the three are grown up and the three are under us my new wife who God gave me is now the one taking care of them at home while I'm here so why do I share with you this one because we need to pray for one another when we are out to work for the Lord the devil is not happy and uh, for this and uh, I have on my side I've set a big goal as people have been telling me I, I, me the big the goal is too big the devil also knows that the goal is too big but with God we know we will meet that goal that is why sometimes the devil is very cruel bringing a lot of obstacles for us not to reach the goal for us to be in order to discourage us not to push on so we need each and every we need prayers from brothers and sisters now let me go to the word of god let's go to the book of matthew matthew 28 verse 19 and 20 Here it goes. Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Verse twenty, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Father we thank you for your wonderful love. You have given us opportunity to come here and to share your word with your people. Please may, may we open our hearts and get right the word which you are going to to teach us this evening. We ask you and we bless you in Jesus name I love and pray. Amen. This two verses in Matthew 28 verse 19 and 20 It is a very simple they are very simple verses In Kenya you find almost every church writes this verse on a wall Go ye therefore teach all nations. Which means it is easy. I've looked here I've never seen it. Eh? But almost every church in Kenya if you enter in the church they write it. It is easy to memorize. It is easy to say it. It is easy to read it. And the people knows it. tonight we want to discuss this verse two verses it is saying that go ye therefore when i'm studying this verse the, this number 20 verse number 20 i've never heard i'm still doing research i've never seen if it is only talking to the pastors 
if it is only talking to the missionaries, if it is only talking to the evangelists, but when I read it, yes, I agree that it is talking to me. It tells me to go. What about you? If you are reading it, what does it tell you? How do you understand it? That does verse tell you that when you are reading it, it refers to me. You are the one reading it and it, it refers to me. Is it, is it that way? No. It tells us to go. All of us. Not me alone. Not the pastor alone. It tells us go. Here the verse is now becoming simple but not cheap. It is simple but not cheap. But people have taken it like it is cheap. Why? That is why it is written in Kenya. You find it everywhere in the churches. I don't, I don't say that it is wrong to write it. No. The, what I need to understand here is what it says. It tells us to go. So it, what matters here? You need to go according to your capacity. If your capacity can allow you to reach your family, go to your family. Because it is not fair if other people will go to heaven and will, they will go to heaven because of you, because of me, while my family will go to hell. If your capacity only allows you to reach your family, go to your family. Then they receive Lord Jesus Christ. Go ye therefore. You see, God is talking here. Is God a liar? No. But uh, do you think me, I can go to the all part of the world? Do you think? No. It, that means that there is some of under, under some understanding behind that verse. There are some understanding that under that oh, and I mean some understanding behind that verse. How then should it be? Me alone, there are some people who have touched almost every country on the world. But that does not mean that they can go to the all part of the world. Because when I was coming here, I, I took a, 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 a connection to Qatar. The place where I walked in Qatar was very small. This place where I walked in Miami was very small. And now I have already taken, almost taking three months in, term in, in, in Florida. Yeah? But the place I've walked in Florida, very small. How long will it take me to go to the whole part of the world? It needs some understanding behind that verse. That is why that verse does not mean to only pastors, to only missionaries. If we all get it right that we should go, as the Bible is saying, then we will reach the whole world with the gospel. Because sometimes when we introduce ourselves, we say that I have children, I have grandchildren. Are people not saying that? We have. Why don't we say number of children we have in Christ? Number of 
grandchildren we have led to Christ. Number of great, great grandchildren we have taken to the Lord. And if we continue doing it the same way Paul told Timothy, then we will reach the whole world. Because the people I can reach is not the people you can reach. They are different. And each of them, the people they can reach is different. Then that is a kind of calculation. It, the, the, the word can spread to the whole world. So as from today, from tonight I mean, this verse is encouraging us not to neglect the work for some people. Read it yourself. Because even if I'm reading it to you, it also sounds like I'm sending you, telling you to go, and me, I remain here. It is telling us, all of us, to go. Then when we have go, gone, we reach the people. Those who are near us will come to church. Then we will teach them to observe all things. You see? Like yesterday. It is not a waste. Eh? To be in God's house. How will we know that it is not a waste to be in God's house? When they have come, when, now we are teaching them to observe all things in verse 20. Verse 20 is now teaching us a lot of things. How we can go. You know, not all people can go. But we are in a position of going all. How? If you cannot go physically, then you can go spiritually. You can pray for the one who is going. You can give for the one who is going. If the one is going and you are remaining, we can share the cost. And when the Lord will be giving reward, you will find when reward is 100%, 50 is the, the for the sender and 50 for the one who went. You see? It is not that the the one who is going will get a lot. No, no. Because I cannot go if you are not behind me. If you are not praying for me, I cannot go. If I have, listen, if I have money and there is none to go, still work is now not, not, not be done. They are equal. If there is one to go and there is no money, he will not go. And if there is a person with money and there is none to go, then it, it is still zero. So we must join our heads together to look how we can reach the world with the gospel. Outside there, we have doctors. I think we know the work of doctors, don't we? Eh? Doctors. What is the work of a doctor? Eh? Okay. What is the work of a doctor? Am I communicating? Yes. Okay. Maybe in English we are, we learn it from school. <laughs> I may call it doctor, and you are not getting what I mean here. <laughs> okay. We have a doctor and a sick person, whom we call patient. Sick person and a doctor, who is looking for the other? Who can tell me? If you know, just carry your hand and say it aloud. The patient looking for the doctor. Right. And the patient will look for the best, the best doctor. Isn't it? If you are sick, are you just looking, just a person called a doctor? No. You look for the best doctor. 
and uh, it is the work of a patient, a sick person, to look for the doctor. Here, the same people, we are doctors, but our work is different. We are doctors because we are saved, but our work is different. For the sick people to look for us, we are now going out to look for the sick people. The people who are not saved, we call, we call them as sick people. And when we bring them, we look for them, the medicine is here because they are sick. All the medicine are here. So we, even if we have a very nice building like this one, and we sit down, they will not come. You see? We will, it is until we go out for them. When we go out looking for them, they keep on coming to the church. Coming. When we stop going out, they stop coming. They don't come. So our work is to look for the sick people and bring them here. We teach them. We treat them with the word of God. So those doctors, when you are sick, you are looking for them. And when you reach, you are almost to reach where they are, they put something we call consultation fee. You look for them, and you also meet an a, a obstacle. Consultation fee is an obstacle. Because sickness can come, and you don't have that much. Now it is offending you not to reach the doctor. You are looking for them and reaching them, becoming difficult too. And sometimes you can pay the consultation fee and when you go there, you, you get him relaxed. As I've seen in Kenya, many sick people have died when they paid what we call consultation fee before the doctors attended against them. They die. We need not to use, to work with our patients that way. We need our people, our, those people who are outside there, to know Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. Because one time, we will be judged with the, what we have done. Because we were saved free of charge. We did not pay anything. We need to go out and share the word of God with those people. We should not wait for them to come. They are sick. They will not come. They are now like unable. They will not come here unless we go to them. So we need to go out to win souls for the Lord. When I'm concluding, have you thought of a hundred years from now, how is your life? How do you think, how do you imagine your life will be? A hundred years from now. I mean, those who have not yet born, now, many of them, all of us here, will be underground. And where will our soul be? With the Lord. Have you thought of ancestors? What they did? Is that coming to your mind? No. That is the same thing. Our grandchildren, our sons, our what? will not remember us. So what we do today, we do for the Lord. What we, whatever we do today, tonight, or today I mean this day is not this night only. What we do today, we do for the Lord. Because we may think that the old people 
are the one who are just next to go. No. The order of going to the Lord is not that way. Sometimes you find a young one is gone, the middle one is gone, the old one is remaining. Eh? You see? But what I'm sure of, a hundred years to come as from now will find us nowhere. So what we can do for the Lord tonight, today, let us, let us do it. Our life which we have, let us use it for the Lord. Let us win souls. Share with them the word of God which you have known. Here in America, you have a lot of materials which we lack in Kenya. Sometimes you can hope, people can, you can meet someone you want to teach uh, the word of God and you fail to get even a Bible. Because when you talk with your head, it just thinks that, that those are, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are way of conning people. But when you read it exactly and you tell her, if she knows, he knows how to read, she also read. But you have everything here. I encourage one another, each of us, that we need to utilize the life we have. We invest in God's business. Then God will be on our side. May God bless you. I pray. Father, we thank you this night. You are a wonderful God. We thank you, Lord, for your people. We thank you for this church. We thank you also for the pastor. We thank you, Lord, for this program of health ministries. Even the brothers who has been going around with us, we thank you for them. Bless them. You have been traveling in long, in dangerous highways, Lord, but with you, we know that you are our protector. Bless us this night. Bless your word and let your word change our lives. In Jesus' name, I love and pray. Amen. Tom's going to play something on the piano as he does. Maybe the Lord spoke to your heart tonight. And we have to ask the question of 